Hey Rosebank Union family and friends who have joined us. Greetings in the name of our conquering risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And welcome to our Church at Home worship service. We are so glad that you have chosen to tune in with us as we wander in God's presence. Praising Him, giving thanks and singing songs of celebration on this Lord's Day. I hope all of you are well in good spirit. If you are not and struggling a bit, Remember this, the Lord is with us and we are praying for you. There is so much exciting things to share with you in our service today. And without any waste of time, I invite you to sit back, relax and listen to these wonderful stories of what God is doing in the midst of this ravaging and disruptive virus gripping our world. Richard, our senior pastor, went about interviewing folk in our church who are doing some amazing things. And I invite you now to watch and be blessed. Sure, so um, I was part of the Johannesburg Homelessness Network and we were just helping the city of Joburg try to accommodate homeless people um, so I had just had a great amount of people um, and yeah, we, people were just saying, we need people to run shelters, can you help? Um, it's always been a dream of mine, it's one of the things that I've really um, wanted to do for a long time. It's the whole reason I have Bounty for the Thirsty. Feeding people was a stepping stone to housing people. Okay. Um, yeah. So this to me is kind of like more like a dream come true or like a a longing of mine for full. I think um, overall it's going pretty well. The first few days there was a lot of like work guys and um, like we've had haircuts, we've had a lot of like just admin getting everything we need kind of here. A lot of the guys have been resting quite a bit, um, you know, just kind of everybody getting into the routine, kind of creating like a family kind of vibe. Mm. We all know what happens when and how things get done. Um, but now, today is like the first day where everything seems to be running completely smoothly. We've got everything we need. Everybody's mm. feeling a bit more comfortable and relaxed. Mm. Um, so yeah, things have been going really well. Um, we have one last space empty. Um, so okay. we've had some people come and we've had some people choose to leave or be asked to leave. Um, so we've had some bumps, but overall, I think it's been pretty good. The first was that we have a shelter at Rosebank Union Church. I didn't think it was possible, but here we are. And it was so actually incredibly wow. easy to get it to go through. Like even working with the city of Joburg and getting things mm. signed, um, going through the church council, that was just so smooth compared to how we tried with other churches and we tried in so many places. Mm. Um, so just the admin was so smooth. Um, and then also like the first um, night, I think we had we tried to make... We had 27 guys and we were trying to make clothing parcels so that everybody had clothes to change into. And we never give out things unless there's enough for everybody. So we were really hoping we were going to have enough items for um, everyone to get. And when we counted, we had exactly 27 parcels That's for the 27 amazing. guys. That's so cool. And it was like incredible. Yeah. Um, and then... Like yesterday, one of my favorite ones was we had so much bread. I don't even know where it came from. If you watching and it was you, thank you. Um, but we had so much bread. And I was like, what are we going to do with all this bread? And then the next thing, um, Oliver from Hotel Hope came in and to bring some, some guys to come join the shelter. And I was like, do you need bread? And he was like, you'd never believe. My baker this morning said... They can't supply me my 30 loaves of bread that I ordered because they're all sold out. Um, and I was like, wow, I have bread for you. So that was just incredible. Like, to just see how the, the, the immediate needs of people are being met. Mm. And it's just all coming together. Um, we haven't had any lack. Um, we've had everything we need in terms of, like, food, where we've had non-perishable food items coming in. Um, between the church and my house just to find so many people needing bread and mm. macaroni and whatever and it's just going out as fast as it's coming in mm. so that's been really awesome yeah sure so i think if i look back 
when I started. If somebody told me I was going to be running an emergency shelter, I would have laughed at them. Mm. And it was really, God just said to me, uh, I just said to God, God, what can I do? And God said, share your sandwich. Mm. And it was just simple steps of obedience that mm. kind of led to this place. And God has been preparing people so far in advance. And like, there were times when I was so in despair and I was like, it's never going to happen. I'm not, I can't be used. And it can happen. And it has happened. And I'm not special. Mm. Um, so I think for people that are sitting there at home, they've got dreams or hopes and maybe they've given up. Mm. I think this is a time when they can really revisit those ideas with God and be like, God, where mm. maybe mm. was I not obedient? Where was I maybe I gave up too soon? Um, mm. And to just kind of believe in those dreams again. Um, one of the scriptures that was very um, powerful to me is I always used to know that hope deferred makes the heart grow sick. Mm. And I knew that part of the scripture. But I never knew the part that a longing fulfilled is a spring of life or a tree mm. of life. I can't remember exactly what it is. Mm. But I'd always known the bad part, mm. but I'd never tasted the mm. promise that God had. And I think when people can persevere um, the length of the journey and they know how sweet it is when the hope inside of you is fulfilled, that's really powerful as opposed to giving up and only knowing how sick your heart gets when what you longing for and what you were created for isn't fulfilled yeah so it's hanging there yeah i think you know when all of this news hits about what's going to happen and and about lockdowns we really had to sit down with our team and talk about you know how do we respond as as those who are serving in the name of Christ in that community. Mm. So when we made the decision in March to go and um, you know seek to provide food parcels, uh, hygiene uh, equipment, as well as um, um, medicines to enable people to manage symptoms, we felt that um, uh, we, when we got into the community, you know, we, we couldn't believe the smiles in people's mm. faces. We couldn't believe what people were saying to us because they were saying okay you did not abandon us too you know, uh, amazing everyone, yeah. amazing you know, it's going away everyone is yeah. going to their home and shutting down and so um, the response i think encouraged all of us to to push through our fears and mm. uh, you know to yes be safe in, with all the things that we need to do mm. but really to trust god and uh, mm. you know for for what happens mm. can i also say thank yeah. you to uh, to our community that has just been uh, so helpful to us because we've got had such a strong support base that has enabled us really to to be a, a, a big help to the community of mm. exactly yeah. appreciate all the many ways that uh, yeah. God has given you to support us. Amazing. Thanks, Sikhle. Good luck, man. Okay, so today we've got, um, we've had a delivery of uh, food items for 200 uh, family hampers that are going to be packed. These guys, amazing people, are busy packing for us, um, putting into parcels. Those parcels will then go uh, into Alex and a hamper will be given to a family so we've got 200 hampers being packed today it's really been it's been mind-blowing our target for these hampers was a thousand hampers which we were going to give to a thousand families of around about six people in a family that has been blown out the water we are now close to 2,000 hampers My so like goodness. it's ultra exciting we have received donations from all over we've received from all over the world from the US from the UK we've received uh, donations corporates have given us a number of large donations mm. many many individuals have given it's just been from all over so we just yeah super grateful okay so what we've tried to do is in each hamper we've tried to put enough groceries for about two to three weeks okay. for a family of six okay and so we have Oil, cooking oil, eggs, uh, five kilos of milli meal, rice, two kilos of rice, uh, pasta, two kilograms of sugar, uh, um, dishwashing liquid, eggs, okay. soup. So two um, weeks supplies basically. Two, two weeks supply of food for hopefully around about a family of six. So we are, like I said, we are nearly at our 2000 mark. which. Okay is just amazing because our initial target was only a thousand so if you keep contributing 
we are um, hoping to continue with this um, until the end of the lockdown and then hopefully even beyond a little bit mm. uh, depending on how things settle down mm. and how much is a hamper like if guys want to donate towards a hamper so the hampers are 850 rand a hamper okay. um, and um, that that gets all those things that I, I described. So 2,000 hampers, 850, so we're talking like 1.7 million has been raced so well far. Well done, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't used my math brain in a while. So I'm just checking it. Uh, but that's um, so I'm running a project for Rays of Hope um, to provide masks for all the people in Alex that are involved in their projects. And uh, so I'm co coordinating a group of 60 women and they're sharing nifty ideas with each other. And so far we've managed to sew in the last week 1,200 masks. Wow. So we've got another 1,200 to go. Okay. And uh, people have donated some money. So we're able to get a project that's working in Dipswit to be able to provide uh, the balance of masks that we need. Um, yeah, you can contact me on my Rosebank Union um, email, which is Jenny with an I at ruc.org.za, and uh, just let me know how you think you'd like to be involved, and in, I can point you in the right direction. Hi Church, uh, I want to from my side welcome you to the service today uh, and I'm so encouraged by those videos, just the feedback we've had from Shailene around just the homeless that we're hosting at the church and thank you to Pastor Ndaba for all his love and care for the guys there and then also what God is doing through Rays of Hope. So I just want to say a huge thank you to you as a church just for your faithfulness in the season even though it's a, a time of stress and a time of fear and a time of uncertainty yet I believe the gospel is still on the move. And I just want to share some encouraging stats with you as we go into this time of singing and worship together. And that is that that post on Facebook about the homeless people has now reached just about 76,000 people. 76,000 people in our city and around the country and around the world uh, have seen that post. And as I've been reading some of the shares on that post uh, and some of the comments on those posts, it's just really amazing to see how God's been working. There. Even some people who've been disillusioned with church, uh, some guy even said, hey, please, uh, is there even one church out there that's not just trying to kind of steal people's money? And then somebody shared our post with him and he said, hey, maybe I'll even come and check out this church. So it's just amazing what God is doing in this season. Um, our live communion service on Easter Friday, I've got the stat here. 381 people were viewing that at the same time. Now that might be individuals, it might be households. Our Easter Sunday service, I know many of you shared it with friends of yours. Um, that service has been viewed just over 2,500 times. So I want to commend you to continue to keep the gospel at the forefront. And so as we go into this time of worship, I've chosen songs that are going to focus us outwardly, get us to think about the gospel, to think about just God's compassion through us, uh, songs that will help us to pray for our city, to pray for our nation, that God would really use this time of lockdown in an amazing way. So I want to read these two passages of Scripture. The first one is from uh, Matthew. It's Matthew chapter 4. Actually, it's Matthew chapter 5 from verses 13 to 16, uh, this well-known passage. Jesus says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. And then Jesus says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And that's my prayer, that as we go about these good deeds, even uh, those of you that are donating, those of you that are giving, those of you that are sharing Facebook pages and sermons, that as we do that, God would be glorified uh, through our good works. And then this encouraging passage from 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, from verse 1. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, 
We commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God, small g, the God, referring to Satan, the God of this age, has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side. Isn't that true, brothers and sisters? We're hard-pressed on every side. But Paul says, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death, for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. So as we come to sing these songs together, let's focus our hearts on Christ. Let's recognize what he still wants to do through us. We're facing a task that's unfinished. We hold this light, this light that can go into the darkness. So let's sing and worship together. God bless you.